guys, we're on chapter 20. The next few hours passed in a blur. Bruce remembered it as a non-stop stream of time in an ambulance at the hospital, in the waiting room, doctors and nurses and police officers all mixed together and choked. You could scarcely tell where one ended and another began. His hand was bandaged, his knuckles bloodied from the fight. One palm cut by a knife without his having noticed it. But otherwise, he had escaped remarkably unscathed, physically at least. His hands were still trembling, and even though he sat in what seemed like a safe place, he half expected a night walker to come lunging around every corner. The important thing was that Alfred was alive. He had suffered a concussion from the blow to his head, but he was going to be okay. Bruce! Bruce looked up, holding his head in his hands to see Diane and Harvey hurrying over to him in the hospital's waiting room. When they reached him, Diane swung her arms around Bruce and gave him a tight hug, while Harvey put a hand on his shoulder and his, eye, his eyes dark with worry. We came as soon as we heard. God, Bruce... He let out a long breath. How are you? Bruce shrugged. As they sat down beside him, okay enough, he replied, glancing down the hall towards Alfred's room. And Alfred? Diane asked. Following Bruce's line, line of sight, he's still resting. He replied, swallowing the guilt. That kept him in. Yep, that kept rising in him. I'm waiting for them to let me see him. Harvey leaned forward in his chair and lowered his voice. Sorry, he said, patting Bruce again on his shoulder. They're going to catch them. I'm willing to bet on it. They won't get away with this. Watch by night. Will be on the news behind bars. Diane looked at. Di oh, oh my God! <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I tripped on my words again. Uh, oh, I put my tea over there. Oh. <sighs> hope you all are doing just fine. I hope you're having the best of uh, of day. <sighs> I hope you don't trip on your word. Diane shook her head. Did you really fend off three night walkers on your own and keep them from hurting Alfred? It all happened so fast. Even if it was true, he didn't feel much like a hero. The night walkers have... Harvey replied in unison, Bruce! The conversation paused as they all looked up to see Lucius hurrying into the waiting room. He clasped. He clasped. Again, man. He clasped Bruce's hand in a firm shake and pulled him, pulled him up for a quick hug. You're safe. Think everything above and Alfred is going to make a full recovery. Bruce replied. Lucius shook his head at Bruce in awe. Heard you were quite a force against the night walkers. But it'd be nice if we could keep you out of any more dangerous situations in the near future. You don't have to attend you don't have to do anything. Just rest. Trust me, no one will be shocked if you decide it's safer to stay away. Hey, your life was... I'll be fine, Lucius. Bruce gave him a firm nod. I'll be as safe at the gala as I will anywhere else. It'll be a 
good distraction. Our drones will be there, won't they? Lucius managed to smile. Yes, they will. A doctor approached and interrupted your conversation. Mr. Pennyworth is his vital signs are all good and you can take him home tonight. Take me home tonight. All other thoughts flew from Bruce's mind. He jumped to his feet. Can I see him now? The doctor nodded for a bit, Mr. Lane. But don't overdo it. He should rest some more. Bruce, <clears throat> Bruce excused himself and followed the doctor down the hall, then stepped through the door that she held open for him. And inside, Alfred sat up straighter in his bed. Bruce had always considered him to be strong and invincible, kind and fair, but now for the first time, he also seemed old. His gray hair is more noticeable than ever mortal. Bruce didn't like that thought. Master Wayne. Alfred said his usually strong, deep voice now somewhat hoarse. Master Wayne. There we go. Alfred said his a large bandage. Bruce hurried to Alfred's side, took the man's hand, and squeezed it. How are you feeling? They told me... They told me they stitched the cut on your forehead. Alfred waved a nonchalant hand in the air. Oh, I'll be better than fine. This is merely a scratch compared to military the night walkers will have to do better than that although not before the police catch up with them bruce felt an enormous weight lift off his chest as alfred's upbeat words his shoulders relaxed he dropped into a chair at alfred's bedside letting his hands. I'm sorry, Alfred. I'm so sorry. I thought I lost you. All those times Bruce had let Alfred worry about him driving too fast, chasing after a criminal on a whim, putting his life on the line over and over, and yet none of that had frightened him as much as the realization that Alfred could have died today. How many times had Bruce inflicted the same fear on his guardian? Alfred's eyes softened at Bruce's bowed head. Steady chin, and M Master Wayne. I'm right here, and aside from a bump on my head, I'm feeling rather fine. You are a man now, albeit a young one, who somehow manages to find trouble. But you will always be my ward. And I will always look out for you. Just as you'll do for me. Bruce met his eyes. He remembered this look. And even though ten years had passed since the night in the alley, it was still the look that could calm Bruce in the darkest moments. Bruce nodded, trying not We make a good team, Master Wayne. Especially with those punches you throw. <laughs> there are no good billionaires. There, a billionaire may be there's always a certain level of, I wouldn't say criminality, but one doesn't earn a billion dollars. 
earn one earns ten fifty an hour. One earns four hundred a week. Thousand dollars a week. There is no hourly wage that will get you billions of dollars. Not for any legitimate work. That doesn't mean that a billionaire can't be a decent person. We're all good. We're all bad. Um, and it doesn't mean that they don't love their friends or family or whatever. And no one deserves, well, okay, most people don't deserve to be harmed physically or psychologically. Most. Um, there is no such thing as evil. There are actions that are evil. People aren't evil. People are damaged, people are sick. Um, not everybody who is harmed or abused becomes someone who causes harm or abuses people. But all abusers were harmed and abused. Nothing's cut and dry. Very few things are black and white. And I think Bruce Wayne is still a good example of how to be a good person. Or at least Bruce Wayne that exists in comics, cartoons, and movies. But... There are no good billionaires. Alfred's familiar humor loosened the knot in Bruce's stomach. He reached over to clap his guardian once on the shoulder. Not too shabby yourself, Alfred. Alfred gave them the wink. Then his expression turned serious. The Night Walkers tagged you as one of their targets. You are similar to Madeline's former target, too, aren't you? How did you know that? You don't think I researched this girl you keep mentioning? He leaned forward with a grimace. She's dangerous. Bruce nodded, then frowned. I know, and I can't understand any of it. He lowered his voice. Alfred, she warned me that last conversation I had with her. She spent it, she spent it telling me to get out of Gotham. this was going to happen and she wanted me to know. Alfred narrowed his eyes. Perhaps she set it all up as a trap. The door behind Bruce opened up. Kraken stepped into the room. The detective sported a nasty wave of relief washed over Bruce at the sight of her, and he half rose from his chair to greet her. Detective, you're... She smiled warily at him, but she 
Satan moved from the door, and Bruce's reply faded from his tongue. Detective? Bruce said again, hesitant this time. What is it? Alfred added. Draken took a deep breath before she nodded at Bruce. It's Madeline. The happiness at seeing Alfred recovering at knowing Draken was well. All made way in it. In all made, all made way. Oh God. The writing. It's not the worst. It's not best. But there are moments that are really, this is not meant to be read out loud. All made way in an instant for a cold blanket of dread. Bruce eyed the detective. What about her? She escaped. Escaped. <laughs> Bruce sat there for a while longer, unable to comprehend her thought. Escape? No, no how? She hadn't run during the jailbreak. Why would she make her move now? She, she couldn't have. He managed to say. Draken held, uh, held up a hand at the TV in Alfred's room, which had rotated to the news. See for yourself. Bruce found himself staring at a news crew's footage of the empty interior of Madeline's former cell. A searing jolt of nausea hit Bruce. He flashed back to Madeline first, staring up at the cam. Then to her casually mentioning how they could be scrambled. Then to her acting vulnerable. again how he could talk to her without letting anyone know. He didn't know oh, how she did it, but somehow Madeline must have taken advantage of Bruce's new setting with the security cams. Of course, it made so much sense now. Why would she try to escape during the jailbreak when the asylum was on high alert and all the girl That was my own tongue. Boom, speed bump. When the guards were looking for the inmates, the place would have been swarming with guards. Instead, she chose to use the time to set things up for her real escape. It had all been part of her grand con against them. Now she was loose somewhere in the city outside Arkham Asylum. She may even have escaped at, at around the same time as Bruce's ordeal. He took his, he shook his head, numb. Where? How? He managed to croak out. Any leads? Yes, one. Draken pushed the door open wider, and Bruce saw that she had several other police officers with her. One of them was holding a set of handcuffs. Behind them stood Harvey, Diane, and Lucius, who cast confused looks his way. You. Bruce's vision swam in a sudden wave of dizziness. Me? We have footage showing you at, as the last person. The intensive treatment ward right before the cams reset. Madeline left behind a note in her cell thanking you for helping her. What? You can't possibly think that, especially after this morning. I have no choice but to consider you a suspect. I'm sorry, Draken sighed deeply, then motioned an officer forward. He held up a pair of cuffs. Bruce Wayne, you're under arrest. I'm going to stop there. Y'all have a good one.